Hello, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to day 11 of NaNoWriMo, in which I am running very late. So all I managed to squeeze in this morning so far was one of Jessica Williamson's 20-minute sprints. Thank you for that. Um, but I got over 500 words. I don't remember exactly how many anymore. I think it actually might have been over 600 words. So, great. And now I gotta run, and I will check in later. Okay, so it is the evening of the 12th of November. I don't think I even recorded anything this morning because this morning was so hectic. I did get 500 and something-ish words done again during one of Jessica Williamson's 20-minute sprints. Thank you again for those, Jessica. You are a lifesaver. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any more done this evening or not. I've decided that I want what I want to do now is something I had hoped to have time to do this weekend, but since I didn't, it really needs to get done today. Because today is the day when Emily Bourne, lunatic writing a book, released her debut novel, In a Mirror. And can I just say also, thank you, Emily, for giving me back that piece of my Boston accent, because I do find myself saying In a Mirror instead of In a Mirror. <laughs> She had her live stream virtual release party tonight, which I was late to uh, for two reasons. One was that I thought it was starting at 7 p.m. my time, but I guess it was starting at 6 p.m. my time. But even if I had known the correct time, I still would have been late because I was doing my office hours that I do out of my office. I do drop in hours in other parts of the campus. So that's where I was until I then got back to my office a little after seven. And I thought I was just a few minutes late. So I just jumped into the conversation. Oh, hi, you know, we're talking about pen names. I'm going to start talking about pen names. And then got a message from Emily saying, hey, you won something. I'm going to email you about that. So I didn't just miss all the stuff at the beginning of the release party. I missed when I won something. Apparently, I am Team Brittany. I have yet to read Anamara, so I don't actually know Brittany or Charlie yet. But I guess I'm now officially Team Brittany because I won the Brittany package. Thank you so much, Emily. I'm super stoked and so looking forward to receiving this. I had intended to attempt to purchase and obtain a signed copy at some point anyway, and now I'm going to get one as part of this package, among many other things. So that was a really fun thing to discover this evening. And I was still, I was already thinking I was going to do this tonight because of it being the release day. But now I definitely want to make sure I do this tonight. And that is Emily's AuthorTube character. Let me get the exact wording. AuthorTube character writing challenge. So I will link to Emily's information below that she actually has right in here. Um, this is something that she created that is just, uh, just a fun challenge for something to do in the middle of NaNoWriMo that is not your regular thing that you're already writing for NaNoWriMo. And something specifically to celebrate the release of her book. So it says, cut out each character attribute and put into a cup one attribute at a time. For example, all the personality types in the cup. Select one and then remove the remaining paper and move on to the next character attribute, e.g. quirk. Once you have all your attributes, create your character, come up with an inciting incident using your character attributes, and use your character to drive the plot of your story. Remember, this is fun and your story can be as short or as long as you like. So I had commented to Emily in the video where she gave this challenge that I was going to mix this up a little bit because what this sounds like to me being the particular type of geek that I am is it sounds like rolling up a character. 
So if I'm going to roll up a character, I'm going to roll up a character. Also, being me and being that I tend to try to incorporate all these other aspects into any characters I create, I figured I needed a couple more pieces of information. So I added three character attributes. So the three character attributes I decided to add were gender, sexuality, and romantic attraction. So at first I thought for gender, and being me, this should not have been my first thought for gender was, oh, I'll flip a coin. Have I met me? Gender is not binary. We know this. This is this is old news. Um, so I found a way to make it work out to four because since everything else is in fours, the particular die I'm going to use is a D4. And while gender could be stretched out to the point where I could probably use a D20, I don't want to use a D20 for one thing. So what I came up with is that um, the four possibilities are going to be male, female, non-binary, and trans. And if I roll up a four for and get trans, then I have to roll again until I get something that's not a four because you can be trans male, trans female, trans non-binary. Those are not the only possibilities, but again, I was trying to keep it to four. And then for sexual orientation, straight, gay, bi plus, so encompassing bisexual, pansexual, omnisexual, polysexual, um, and ace or asexual. And then similarly for romantic attraction, straight, gay, bi plus, and aromantic. Again, not all the possibilities, but trying to keep it to just have being able to use a D4 for all of it. So I've assigned each column. I just numbered them one to four and I'm going to highlight as I get each one. We're starting with personality. So one is for bubbly, two is for sullen, three is for curious, and four is for ignorant. So I got a four. I don't know if you can even see that. Um, but so this person is ignorant. Next up, let's see what their quirk is. One is for their eye twitches when they're angry. Two, they tap their foot when they're nervous. Three, they twirl their hair around a finger to flirt. And four, their ears turn red when they are lying. Got a two. Again, don't know if, well, you definitely can't see it, but I hold it up that way. So they tap their foot when nervous. What is their fear? One is for bats, two is for sailboats, three is for cotton candy, and four is for metallic objects. Three. Really? Every single video I've watched so far, people keep getting this one. They have a fear of cotton candy. Emily, how did you even come up with this? Is this a thing? I, I, I've, I've heard of a lot of phobias. Cotton candy is not one of them. But this person has a fear of cotton candy. Next attribute is their aspiration. Do they aspire to be a famous trumpet player, a world-class surgeon, to own a home, or to climb the Himalayas? Two, they aspire to be a world-class surgeon. What is their family situation? Again, going one to four, orphan with no siblings, mom, dad, and brother, two dads and two sisters, 
lives with grandmother. One, orphan with no siblings. Financial situation. Are they bankrupt? They work two jobs to make ends meet, have family money, or won a million dollars in the lottery. They won a million dollars in the lottery. Could I ever be that lucky if I was trying to draw for my own winning the money? Good. Actually, I guess I could because I won the Britney package tonight. So yes, I can win things sometimes, but it probably would not ever be a million dollars. But my character can win a million dollars. Okay, moving on to gender. They are trans. So now I have to re-roll until I get something that is not a four. Three. They are transgender non-binary. What is their sexual orientation? They're straight. And what is their romantic orientation? They are aromantic. Interesting. So now I need to come up with an inciting incident and a story. Let's see how that goes. All right, well, I managed about five, 600 words of character sketch. Not really a story yet. So I think I'm gonna work on that a little more tomorrow. And I then switched gears to my nano project because I was just feeling that pressure of midnight coming up and it is now a little after midnight, but I did manage to cross the 20,000 word mark before midnight, barely, um, <laughs> barely crossed it and barely before midnight. So at least I'm still just on track with the nano goal. Uh, nowhere near my personal goal, which for today, well, you know, yesterday, the 12th, would have been 24,000 words, but still not complaining. And I'm at least staying on track to hit 50K by the end of the month. That's it for now. I don't even have this past weekend edited up, much less yesterday and today. And I think that's how they're going to be grouped is the 8th through the 10th and then the 11th and 12th. But we'll see because I'm now behind in editing things. But at least I'm staying on track for the writing of things. I'm also very tired. So I'm going to sleep now. And uh, probably calling it the end of an episode. And uh, see you next time. Until then, happy writing and have a wonderful day. Bye. Just a really quick check-in. It's currently the 13th of November, hence the change, but I uh, did finish up at least as much as I think I'm going to be able to do right now on Emily's AuthorTube character challenge. It's still not really a story. It's more of a vignette, but at least it's a little more than just a character sketch. I definitely made the challenge a little harder with all the demographic pieces that I put in. I managed to hit most of them. I'm not sure I managed a romantic. I think particularly for a character with some of the other traits that were given, it would take a lot more text than I have time to write to build that really into the character in a way that would make sense as opposed to just like throwing it in as a random line. <clears throat> um, but I, in my head that the, the character is aromantic. I just haven't figured out how I would, how I would really get that across in such a short space. If I ever pick the story back up and go anywhere with it, then I'll see what I can do with that. The thing that I noticed as I was getting ready this morning, it just popped into my head. I'm adding all these other demographic characteristics 
You know what I left out? Race? I like to think that I haven't internalized the sort of idea that white is the default, but clearly I have because it is just so drilled into our society, um, at least in the US and I think in a lot of the world where the, maybe the majority of the population is white, that that becomes sort of the default assumption. And I just never even thought to include that as a characteristic that I could randomize. So I'm just going to go ahead and call myself out on that because I'm the one who added any real demographic characteristics to the character. There were character traits that were given in the original challenge, but not demographics. Those were left to the author. I'm the one who built them in so they could be randomized and then left out this particular rather important demographic category to not include and randomize. So that was a lesson learned. Um, I'll end up probably talking about that more later uh, in one of the topics that I'm going to address related to what I'm writing right now. I think, however, that's where I'm going to stop because I don't want this to get too long. I still have it edited together days 8 through 10. I want 8 through 10 to be a chunk and 11, 12 to be a chunk, partly because they were filmed to be that way and partly because I don't want to end up doing the whole week together and it gets really long. So stopping for now and saying until next time, happy writing and have a wonderful day. Bye.